Hi, I'm Dave Northey from Microsoft in Ireland and I'm going to spend the next six minutes explaining to you why I think Hyper-V is an absolute no-brainer for virtualization. To start with, Hyper-V is simply a role that you enable on a Windows server. Uh, you go into the Add Roles wizard, you tick this box, press Next a couple of times, server reboots and you've enabled Hyper-V. Hyper-V itself is a 7 to 800 kilobyte hypervisor that runs underneath Windows Server itself on the processor. So what was a, a clean install of Windows running on the TIN after the reboot simply becomes a virtual machine running on top of Hyper-V still on the TIN. Uh, it still runs at ring zero for those of you who understand processor architectures. So um, I speeded that up just to stop us watching a server reboot uh, and once you log back on again to the server, um, server manager resumes and we just confirm that the Hyper-V role was enabled correctly and everything's working as should be. Uh, and once it's done that, which takes a second or two, I can now go in and start managing Hyper-V itself. So that's it successful, press close. Uh, Hyper-V manager within server manager is already enabled. From there I can navigate my way down to the server and manage it. Now out of interest most people don't use server manager to manage Hyper-V. They would download the remote server administration tools onto their desktop and fire up Hyper-V manager itself. So within Hyper-V manager you just uh, fire it up and connect to the server or servers that you wish to manage. So there's me connecting to, to node 1. Now the first thing you want to do or one of the things you want to do is create a virtual machine. Uh, this is also very easy to do, uh, wizards for everything. Uh, create, a new, create a new virtual machine, give it a name, call this one demo, assign some memory, I'll give it a gig, you can change this afterwards if you wish, connect it to a, to a network um, and you can change these after again if you wish, um, create a, hard, a virtual hard disk, I'll take the default for now and choose where to install Windows from. Um, or an other operating system. We support more than just Windows. Um, I happen to have an ISO of the Windows DVD, so I'll pop that in the drive logically uh, and press finish. There's my virtual machine created. And all I have to do now is start it uh, and proceed through the installation process of Windows. So I'll just press start. connected via an RDP connection session um, run through the, the installation process of Windows. Now we're not going to sit and watch Windows uh, install itself, that would be a bit boring. So while other than that I'll explain to you um, a much cleverer thing. Within the enterprise and data center editions of Windows Server is something called failover clustering. Um, failover clustering is the ability to you get multiple servers joined together to behave as one. Uh, to create a cluster is as simple as this, you go into the create cluster wizard give the cluster a name, press next uh, and it creates a cluster. I haven't speeded this up, this is how long it actually takes but beware I did spend about an hour configuring my servers to connect to some shared storage uh, and use networking correctly so that um, they behave as one, as a cluster. Once the cluster is created I can now start creating um, highly available virtual machines. Let me give this a second or two to come up and I'll run you through that one too. So this takes, I should have timed it probably, 30 seconds maybe to create a cluster plus the hour or so of hard work beforehand. Um, and there's my cluster created. So I'll just quickly open the cluster up itself by managing it. And again you can run these tools from anywhere you like from your desktop. You don't need to physically be connected to a, a server to, to manage all this stuff. So um, here's my cluster, two nodes, node 1, node 2. Um, I'll open it up just to show you. Here's my two nodes. Great naming convention, Dave's. <laughs> node 1, Node 2. There's my storage. Um, and there's my networking. So, to create a new virtual machine on a cluster, it's exactly the same wizard as we used before. I'll call this one Test 2. Um, but rather than put, take the defaults for the location of the virtual machine, I need to put it on the shared storage so that every node in the cluster can own this virtual machine. Um, and to speed things up again, here's one I created earlier in the good old Blue Peter styley. So rather than watching an installation happen, here's a virtual machine that I've already created. Um, so that's how easy it is to create a virtual machine on a cluster. If you create a virtual machine on shared storage, the cluster manager 
assumes you want to make it highly, av highly available and does so. So here's my highly available virtual machine, which I can now start. Now you can see it's currently running on Node 1 and the disks are also owned by Node 1. So once this is up and running, I can do some clever stuff with it. So imagine I want to do some planned maintenance on Node 1. I'm going to do a live migration of that virtual machine onto Node 2 so that I can do the work on Node 1. Um, whilst I'm live migrating that, um, users of that server don't notice a thing. They're happily working away uh, and they honestly don't notice a thing. Uh, it took 20 seconds or so there as I was copying the memory from one server to the other. Now it's now running on node 2. That's a planned maintenance. Unplanned maintenance is kind of a bit like this. I have the ability to move the disks from one server to another. So pull the disks out from underneath this one, so to speak. So now I imagine a physical server has just died. What happens now is the remaining server or servers in the cluster take ownership of the disk and they'll spin up those virtual machines. So we give you planned downtime and planned downtime and it's all within the ver the license of Windows Server itself. So I honestly believe Hyper-V is an absolute no-brainer. Um, don't believe me, play with it yourself. Thanks very much.